I am uh, Kyle Ambrose. I am a Connecticut State Trooper currently. I've been on the job for five and a half years now. Definitely runs in the blood. My father was um, was a uh, Springfield police officer, Springfield, Massachusetts. My uncle is still currently on the job as a sergeant in Springfield, Mass. And I have several cousins that are in the state of Florida as law enforcement officers as well. Unfortunately, in 2012, June of 2012, my father was killed in the line of duty. Um, and so ever since then, I have been a member of the organization. It is such a great organization. Um, and they definitely help rebuild shattered lives as their uh, um, motto states. My father was actually one of the funniest people I ever met and it's not, I'm not just saying that because he was my father. Literally any and every person that has ever met him basically said the same thing. It was such a blast growing up with him. He coached me in pretty much every sport I could imagine and it was just it was it was a lot of fun because he always had us on our toes in regards to laughing about any and everything. He, uh, he responded to a uh, property retrieval. Um, just a normal, I, I guess if you consider any call normal, that would be it. Property retrieval for an X for a TV. Um, it went south and uh, unfortunately the uh, perpetrator, the suspect, turned a gun on him, uh, shot through the apartment door, uh, striking him three times, opened the uh, door and shot him four more times, execution style. I had a bunch of missed calls, I was at the gym. And uh, I thought it was kind of random, a bunch of random people calling me that don't usually call me on a daily basis. My mother being one of them, obviously. Um, and I finally picked up one of her calls and she said, dad's been shot. Had no other information other than that. So I'm like, okay. She told me exactly what hospital he was going to. Currently it was the one that I was working at, ironically enough, doing security there. So I got in my car and I, that was probably the slowest I've ever driven because I had no idea what to expect. I couldn't really think other than I had no idea. Um, she was obviously tearful, but we didn't really know the um, extent of his injuries by any means. Nobody really did. So when I get to the hospital, I uh, see a, another uh, Springfield police officer and I stop and ask him if the officer was okay. He gave me such a weird look who is this random kid asking uh, about a police officer, you know? And he ends up, uh, I end up telling him who I am. And he goes, oh, well, they're still working on him. Okay. I pull in and uh, all the security guys tell me to park my car wherever I want because obviously I know all of them. And uh, as soon as I get to the front uh, entrance of the ambulance bay, I see my uncle, I see another, um, another family friend who is also a Springfield police officer standing in a line and he didn't say anything he had tears in his eyes he gave me a hug didn't say anything to me my uncle um, gave me a hug and he goes I'm sorry as soon as as soon as he said that I knew my dad was dead and so I I broke down right there um, and it was it was somewhat of a struggle but then I knew I had to be strong for my mother because my mother was still in the picture. I have an older sister who I had to be strong for as well as uh, my, at the time, my four-year-old niece who lived with my father and my mother and my sister. So I knew I kinda, I was now the man of the family and that was hard to take, but I knew I had to be strong for her. Uh, the next few days were just a complete whirlwind. Um, I had no idea what to expect. I had, um, again, I. All I kept thinking about was how am I going to support this family, uh, working part time, going to school, uh, because again, I'm now the man of the house and that, that was my biggest fear. However, uh, my uncle and everyone else kept reassuring me that things were going to be okay in regards to whether it be the money situation or, or whatever, uh, because we had a good, strong family tie, which, was, which definitely helped, as well as the Springfield Police Department. They were a huge help, huge asset, and then again, concerns of police survivors stepping in and uh, kind of lifting us up. Was, uh, we had so much support throughout the state of Massachusetts, throughout the city of Springfield, and pretty much all over. I mean, there was, I think, it ended up being about 6,000 cops that showed up for my dad's funeral. So the day of the funeral um, started bright and early. Um, we showed up, we started at the funeral home, um, which again was right in Springfield, Mass. Everything kind of was in a, um, was in a two mile radius. So the funeral home, the uh, church that 
we were having the ceremony at and then the cemetery. So everything was right in a row. So there's about probably 100 to 200 officers that walked with, with the caravan of, with my dad, with ourselves in it from the um, funeral home to then the church and then continued on to the, uh, to the cemetery. Um, it, it was such an outpouring show of emotion in regards to law enforcement. Um, I mean, there's medics there, there's fire there, there is it just any, any emergency personnel. It was in that, that, that outlook there for me is the reason I got into the honor guard for the Connecticut State Police because I know what it feels like to be on the other side. Just seeing the sea of blue or the representation of law enforcement was very, very impressive, and that's what truly stuck out to me. I always planned on going into law enforcement. It essentially, was really the only thing I knew. Um, I, pre previously to my dad dying, I was studying criminal justice. I had my associate's degree. Uh, after my dad's passing, I continued on and got my bachelor's. Um, and eventually, I planned on going a little bit further as well. But uh, that was really the only thing I ever knew. So um, I didn't really have much else in mind in regards to a career path. So it was pretty much in my blood. I just knew I didn't really want to work for the city of Springfield where my dad worked. S same thing, She uh, it, it wasn't a shock to her. It wasn't, oh, once my dad died, oh, I now have to do this. No, it was pretty much everything that I knew. I was, again, I already had my associates in criminal justice. So she pretty much knew that I was applying to departments even previously to my dad dying. At the time, I was 23, so I, I've already been applying to jobs and just trying to get my foot in the door somewhere. So she, it wasn't a complete shock to her by any means. And anytime I talk to her, she always says that she's happy that I made the choice that I made in regards to making myself happy. And that's, that's all she truly cares about. If you end up in this group in regards to being a survivor, they do amazing work. Um, they're there to support each other they can relate, generally speaking, to what you're going through. And just to have somebody to talk to, even if it's somebody from the other side of the country, they can understand and relate to losing an officer in some capacity. So therefore, you actually have that support system. You actually have someone that can connect with you on a different level. Um, so that right there is huge to me. Um, as well as it's just everybody is fantastic in this organization and they truly have the survivors in their hearts and minds and that's basically the core value of the concerns of police survivors.